making kanji and waiting for the snow that's supposed to be here in just a matter of 36 hours. <laughs> oh, I am in like real high key nesting mode. Let me take that back. I was in high key nesting mode similarly to like when I was going to give birth to a to a baby which I am absolutely not but instead I'm having surgery and so for the last several days I have been just just hitting the nesting real hard like all of the laundry I tore down all of my Christmas and put it away there was a closet organization. There was some purging. I mean, I really committed to my nesting. And then today, um, I got like a little bit of food prep done and I'm making kanji and like settling into cozy town. Also pretty hard. Waiting for the snow in 36 hours. <laughs> Why am I like this? Uh, anyways, I am having surgery tomorrow. I have an abdominal hernia. So hot. The word hernia, I still can't get over it. It's, it's not a good word. But anyways, that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. And so I really did. I felt like this. I feel like very... Um, supported and cared for and thought about and considered um you know like tomorrow and then even even the weeks to come you know whether it's uh folks wanting to um send a meal or drop by with a meal um or folks that have offered to help with the babies i am feeling uh very much cared for and loved so and then there's kanji, you know? I mean, what's cozier than kanji? Somebody tell me. Actually, this is technically the first time that I've made kanji. And so I will report back. Like, I'm just doing the base, right? Like the porridge type base. Um, and then I'll do like all of the accoutrements later. We'll report back. Also, if some of y'all listened to like the last two episodes about the cinnamon rolls... I am very happy to report that I did, in fact, make the cinnamon rolls for Christmas. Don't y'all worry. It happened. I committed. And I'm rather grateful that I did. I actually did not do them for Christmas morning. I did them uh, the day after uh, for my partner's family. So that was really fun and sweet and got to leave some with them. And so, yes, I made the cinnamon rolls. Any who y'all if you're listening to this we are just like a couple of days into 2022 um which is really weird to say out loud because I feel like for several reasons time has sort of stopped especially um because of the pandemic that is certainly not over but I mean Apparently, our government thinks so. So, <laughs> oh man, if you're a social media er, uh, you might be seeing like all of the CDC memes, which is like rather unfortunate, right? That, like, I mean, I know so many of us sort of use humor as a means to cope, but just like, fuck me. Some of the CDC memes have had me on the floor. All right, maybe not like physically on the floor, but you know what I mean. I mean, they've hit, they've hit, it's like, ow, that's too soon. And also, holy shit, you really, you really nailed that right on the head. Um, so anyways, it's 2022. Hi, we're also going to be excited about it. I keep doing this thing where I'm like, what the fuck is next? And also, I don't know. I mean, we're not like a, if you're listening to this, it is 2022. But as I think about the the coming days and the, and the year ahead, um, 
in my bones, I feel a sense of levity in some ways that there is lightness that is around the corner and god damn if I'm not clinging to that and nobody will take that from me I said what I said amen I hope that um you're doing all right after the holidays I know that that's a thing for lots of people to be really honest with you I don't know if like post-holiday blue type situation has always been a thing for me I'm not really feeling it this year and I'm feeling so fucking grateful for that and I actually well I I do kind of know why I mean part of it is like a distraction right like I have a lot of shit on my plate right now in terms of from a business standpoint from caring for myself um post-surgery type thing I really haven't been able to kind of settle into the idea of oh shit the holidays are over now what but if I'm being honest with y'all I also I don't know the holidays were nice this year and also different right like my family structure looks different I'm a single parent and so I had my kids for the holidays and that was really lovely and I'm grateful for that I had a really great holiday season and I also feel like I have a lot of good shit coming down the pipeline that's kind of keeping my head above water. You know what I mean? So I don't know, but I know that that's a thing for so many of y'all. And so I hope that you're doing what you can to tend to yourself and to care for yourself. Um, Take that ass outside, keep her hydrated do the things that you know that you got to do to get yourself to the next day. Um, cause yeah, that really is a thing. But anyways, I hope that y'all, uh, did the crab legs instead of the lobster. I still said what I said in regards to that. And if you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's a reference to last week's episode. So you can still listen to that information is still relative. I promise you that Anywho, let's get into her. Amy in New Mexico wrote, Hi, Ava. I just finished listening to your last episode where you talk about resolutions. It was actually the first episode I listened to, and I appreciate your anti-diet stance. Do you have any food resolutions per se? Things you want to eat more of or make? Thanks for sharing in advance. I can't wait to listen. I love this question. You know, like last week we were thinking about and talking about... um, just to kind of recap the year, you know, things that I made, um, things that really stood out to me, things that I ate that stood out to me. And I mentioned that there wasn't a ton, right? Like there was definitely some, some first things and some things that I was really proud of. But for the most part, like I, you know, in terms of project baking and project cooking, I didn't have an extensive list. And if I'm being real honest with you, my list for this year is I'm not going to do that to myself. Yes, there are absolutely things that I want to make and that I would like to try for the first time. But I am learning say somewhat in a hard way uh, of like doing my part doing a better job of like taking it easy on myself in in some of these areas right I mean like there have definitely been points in my lifetime where I'm like do all the things make all the things commit to all the things say yes to all the things and this year I really want to continue just kind of honoring myself and my schedule and my family. And I don't want to overcommit because I'm so fucking good at it. (laughs) And it really comes back to biting me in the ass. And you're like, okay, we're talking about shit that you want to make in 2022 or foods that you want to eat. It is not that big of a deal, but like for real, don't, don't get me started. Cause if you want me to, I will make a whole ass list and maybe bust out a quarter of it. And then kick my shit in for like a substantial amount of time for not doing the whole ass list. So food 
resolutions for 2022. You know what I really want to make? Is like pat a shoe. Do you know that I've never made that? I understand that it's like not that big of a deal. But I also know that you can fuck it up pretty good. And so that's been on my list. Uh, I still want to make, you know, like a sponge, like for like a pumpkin bowl or something similar. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Intimidates the sweet Jesus out of me. Cakes in general are not really my strong suit. So I'd really like to do that. The other thing that I would really like to do is I would love to eat more fish that I somehow prepare myself. Okay, I'm not talking about like going out for sush. I'm talking about like making fish at home and like trying to figure out how to not have my house smell like it for days on end. I'm so weird about how my house smells, y'all. I'm so weird about it. So on that note, and I know that we've kind of touched on this in some previous episodes, but if you have pointers or recommendations, your girl does not have a grill. I live in an apartment. Help me. Help me help myself and feed myself more fish. Um, I also, I want to dig around into some more Korean cuisine Like, I feel pretty well-versed in a lot of Thai food and a lot of Vietnamese food. Um, Even some, uh, like, authentic Chinese dishes and recipes. And I don't really feel super well-versed in a lot of Korean dishes and making a lot of Korean food at home. And I love Korean food. So, I also want to do that. And... Then I want to do like some dumb shit, like have my knives professionally sharpened. Hello? I would like to get new knives. My knives, they need some work. They really do. They just need some work. Also, I don't know. I feel like I eat... I know that I eat a lot of vegetables, but I still there for like a hot minute. I mean, if we're being honest with one another. So I used to eat a vegetable at every single meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I was real good at that for a long time. And I would like to actually kind of incorporate that a little bit more so long as it doesn't put me in like a weird place um, in terms of like food rules and dieting and that sort of thing. So long as it continues to come from a place of, I want to nourish my body in this way and not like a, a, you know, like high key rigid type type thing. I would love to get back into that. So like I said, I mean, those are some of my resolutions. Those are some of the things that I've been thinking about in terms of like food and what I would like to get acquainted with more and things that I would like to make. And like the reality is, is that I have, I still want to make like stuffed pasta. That has been on my list for literally two years. Still haven't done it. I've done it before in the past. Still haven't, you know what else I have not made that I have always wanted to make is pierogies. Still haven't done that. I will report back. Project cooking, man. I, yeah, it is a whole ass thing. And you know what? It is, I really am a, I'm, I really firmly believe that like we give our time and our energy to and and anything we give our money our time our energy our energy to like the things that are the most important to us right and so it's easy to say like I don't have time for that or I don't have energy for that or whatever the case may be and the gray area is that like if that has the capacity that sentence has the capacity to sound 
real privileged and real capitalistic in a lot of ways. But I think that we can all kind of agree that like if we didn't fucking doom scroll for two hours out of our day, we might be able to make stuffed pasta. Okay, do you get what I'm saying? So like, I'm gonna just keep my edges clean, a little bit tighter, if you will, so that I can dedicate a teeny tiny bit more time to like some intentional type cooking and baking. Okay? Okay. Like I said, I will report back. Don't you worry. Another email that I got this week is from Kara in New York City. And she says, hi, Ava. Have you ever thought about writing a cookbook? I love your writing. Keep up the great work. Yes and no. I absolutely have considered writing a cookbook. In fact, when I first started writing the book I am currently writing, which is a food adjacent memoir, I originally intended for it to have recipes included um with essays and I moved away from that to be honest with you um cookbook writing is it's a whole lot of writing it's a whole lot of testing and then retesting and then testing it again if we're being real honest and that is such an art form that is such a day like a, a dedication and a labor of love and your girl just can't I cannot and it's not even so much that I can't, it's that I don't want to. I learned that pretty quickly. You know, like, number one, if we're being real honest, I'm not a great recipe writer. I mean, if you go on my blog, right, like I I share some recipes that are, that are mine, um... And just to be clear, there are recipes on there that are not mine. And if that's the case, it is stated as such. But the recipes that are mine are, you know, like ones that I have tested, but not like extensively, not in some like timed kitchen. You know what I'm saying? Like I am absolutely the definition of a home cook. You know, like I I have not been and will not ever be professionally or classically trained You know, like I am all self-taught. And so it didn't feel disingenuous to me to want to write a cookbook at some point or even not necessarily to write a cookbook, but to share recipes. But like, God damn, like I said, I, number one, I'm not that great at it. You can go, you can go look at and like just shit is out of order sometimes. And like, it's just not my strong suit. I love to share recipes, but I also don't love the, like, the rules that are associated with it. Which is interesting because some of this is the reason that I, um, I didn't like baking for as long as I didn't like baking. Which was, honestly, until around 2018, 2019 for sure. I realize the irony in that as the owner of a bakery. (laughs) But I mean, like there is like there's just a certain level of precision and whatnot when you are writing a cookbook, man. And I just and here's the other thing. The food that I like to cook and the food that I like to eat are not my recipes, Okay, like I love um, Asian food, just Indian food, Vietnamese food, like I said, 
Thai food, Korean food. I mean, like I, that is my jam. That is where I tend to go to first. And like, I'm not, your girl is not going to profit off of that. I don't have any interest in, so that is what feels disingenuous to me. There are thousands and thousands of cookbooks by Indian authors or Vietnamese authors or you see where I'm going with this? And so like, that's not, that's not my shit. That doesn't belong to me. So the long and the short of it is no. The things that I like to make and feed my kids, you know, like I said, on my blog, there are a handful. I don't, I am admittedly not writing for it as much as I was or have been. And for now I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, especially as I kind of really dig into the ins and outs of starting the, the agent process with the book that I'm currently writing that it's almost done if I would get my life together um so no I am not going to not anytime soon and to be really honest with you I don't I think at some point it might be cool to you know like do some more kind of food or food adjacent writing and have some of the recipes that I love to make and share you know, kind of tied into some, some essays at some point, but right now, no, let me just finish this memoir. Okay. <laughs> I really, um, that is also something that I am going to be working on and kind of channeling some energy into, you know, when we're talking about, um, things that we give our time and our energy and our, you know, or whatever to, um, reading and writing is real heavy at the top of my list again. Um, and kind of just, I know that that's what I want and what's, you know, really important to me is to finish this piece of work that has been, um, cathartic and a labor of love and, um, something really scary, but also something that I feel really excited and fortunate to, to be able to share at some point. So that is what I am going to be kind of hunkering down. I feel like, I don't think that reclusive is a great word, but I do just kind of feel like the desire to just kind of go inward, you know? And so whether that's like with um, my motherhood and being really honest with what I want for my business and what I want that to look like and what what I want for myself in terms of um, businesses down the road, I do. I feel kind of as though I am like coming back into myself and coming back home and being, um, yeah, just like a little bit more intentional with what I'm doing and, and who I'm sharing like myself with and my love with and my time and my energy. And so with that, 2021 y'all what a fucking year for real and I really mean that with (laughs) the utmost kind of high five energy and also what the fuck was that I'm sitting on my couch looking out the same window that I always look out and looking at the skyline and Thinking about this time last year doing the same damn thing, except I wasn't doing it with this podcast. 
I wasn't doing it with some of the friendships that I have in my life. I wasn't doing it with some of the relationships that I have in my life now. There's 2021 was such a kick in the teeth in so many ways. And it was also such a telling and beautiful and sort of revealing and shedding year for me. And interestingly enough, when I'm like talking to folks that I love or people in my community, they kind of have similar things to say. And so whatever your 2021 looked like, I hope that you took a couple beats to kind of look at what the last year brought you and what you're going to eat and drink and do and who you're going to love on and who you're going to spend your time and your energy on this year. And at the end of the day, I hope that feels good. I'll catch up with y'all next week. Happy New Year.